birth petty, Franciscan tertiary, victim soul, Catholic mystic, 1943, Belgium. Birth petty, was a humble Franciscan tertiary, a victim soul and apostle of devotion to the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. Born January 23, 1870, in Engen, Belgium and died 1943. She had been privileged with visions of both Our Lord and the Blessed Virgin Mary since the age of four. These are the words that were spoken to her by the Holy Infant Jesus as he traced a cross on her forehead, while she knelt in front of the tabernacle, You will always suffer, but I am with you. At the age of ten she received her first Holy Communion. The effects of which had never left her. It may be said that her whole life was a preparation for Holy Communion with Jesus and one of perpetual prayer and thanksgiving. She was known to spend long periods of time lost in prayer, meditation and thanksgiving after receiving Holy Communion, oblivious to those around her. Her lifelong vocation was revealed to her on this the day of her first Holy Communion. She said to her teacher, A nun, I must suffer a great deal, I must be like Jesus. Who told you that? asked the nun. The little host which is my great Jesus, was the child's immediate reply. And indeed, suffer she did with a life history of painful illnesses, diseases and broken bones. Birth's illnesses brought her to the brink of death on several occasions causing her to receive the last rite seven times. But by far the worst suffering birth endured was the spiritual suffering, as she was continually beset by diabolical persecution. Her soul was tormented night and day by great fears, doubts and perplexities. And on one notable occasion she was literally thrown down a flight of eighteen stone stairs by the devil and almost died on the spot had it not been for a miraculous intervention of our Lord. The devil threatened her, hissing angrily, I shall fight you to the end, haunting the minds, hardening the hearts and feeding the passions. But through all her suffering, Birth Petty maintained a countenance of cheerfulness and sweetness with caring and great sympathy for others' pain. This humble victim soul shunned any public notoriety in the least. And few were her acquaintances or friends. His eminence Cardinal Mercier, one of the few who knew her personally, had great reverence for her sanctity and knew of her personal holiness and genuineness as reflected in his obedience to the divine warnings and request by our Lord for him to solemnly consecrate his country to the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary and by his writings. Almost five years after the Germans had left Brussels, Berth returned to her home only to find it had been completely plundered. Berth was obliged to take up residence with the Sisters of the Sacred Heart at their convent in Arverisch and lived with them for some time. One of the nuns assigned to her room was asked by her superiors to see if Berth took food secretly in her room because they found she ate nothing, save a little coffee in the morning and a small glass of wine in the afternoon, which she promptly rejected. For one whole year the sceptical nun observed carefully everything Berth did or said and was left with nothing but admiration for this humble and virtuous soul. Berth, it was confirmed, lived on nothing but the host. Jesus alone sustained her. As the sister testified, the fact that people came to know of her life without food, was a real mortification to her. Sister Valesin, Trinitarian, at Vevey, charged with Berth at the convent during the Great War. Berth Petty was called to a dual mission. The first was to offer her life of suffering for a good priest of God's choice since she herself was not to become a sister. In her younger days, she had desired with all her heart to become a sister of charity of St. Vincent de Paul, but it was not to be, as her family fell on hard times and she was forced to provide for them with her earnings. As a young teenager Berth offered the sacrifice of her dream to God that her sacrifice might be a source of grace for a holy priest, which would one day bring back many souls to God. God graciously accepted her offering. And it was made known to her that she would one day meet the priest she had sacrificed and suffered for. The second and most profound mission was revealed to birth during a pilgrimage to the shrine of Saint Anne, in Alsace, that her greatest mission was to obtain, the consecration of the world to the sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. Berth knew she would not to live to see the day of the fulfillment of this great commission given her by our Lord. At the end of her life, in excruciating pain she was heard to say pitifully over and over, Sitio, I thirst. After having been fortified by the rites of the Holy Catholic Church, 
birth Francoise Marie Magdalene Ghislaine Petty entered peacefully into her eternal rest on Friday, March 26, 1943. Amen. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ to birth Petty. The title of Immaculate belongs to the whole being of my mother and not specially to her heart. The title flows from my gratuitous gift to the Virgin who was to give me birth. My mother has acquired from her heart the title of Sorrowful by sharing generously in all the sufferings of my heart and my body from the crib to the cross. There is not one of these sorrows which did not pierce the heart of my mother. Living image of my crucified body, her virginal flesh bore the invisible marks of my wounds as her heart felt the sorrows of my own. Nothing could ever tarnish the incorruptibility of her immaculate heart. The title of Sorrowful belongs therefore to the heart of my mother and more than any other. This title is dear to her because it springs from the union of her heart with mine in the redemption of humanity. This title has been acquired by her through her full participation in my Calvary, and it precedes the gratuitous title, Immaculate, which my love bestowed upon her by a singular privilege. The worst calamities which I had predicted are unleashed. The time is now ripe and I wish mankind to turn to the sorrowful and immaculate heart of my mother. Let this prayer be uttered by every soul. Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Let this prayer dictated by my love as a supreme succor be approved and indulgenced, no longer partially and for a small portion of my flock, but for the whole universe, so that it may spread as a refreshing and purifying balm of reparation that will appease my anger. This devotion to the sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of my mother will restore faith and hope to broken hearts and to ruined families. It will help to repair the destruction. It will sweeten sorrow. It will be a new strength for my church, bringing souls, not only to confidence in my heart, but also to abandonment to the sorrowful heart of my mother. Teach souls to love the heart of my mother pierced with sorrow that transfixed my own heart. My desire flows from my love on Calvary. In giving John to my mother as a son, I entrusted the whole world to her sorrowful motherhood. Let every soul cry out, Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Amen. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Potter, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.